Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mind of Steel, the weekly delve into the wacky and wonderful world of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. Today's episode is not one of my own creation because I am on vacation and therefore far too busy doing nothing to make a video for you all to watch. You, you, you can go and watch something else for a change. And boy do I have a treat for you because this is a video created by my dear friend Mohammed Shafiq. He is perhaps the original UK conspiracy theory vlogger because he, he was covering all of the people in the UK conspiracy movement long before I'd even heard of them. Mohammed Shafiq is a profoundly interesting person. He's somebody who doesn't reveal his identity on video because he lives uncomfortably close to some of the people that he makes videos about. What he uh, lacks in his visual presence, he more than makes up for in the quality of, re of his research, because once you get talking to him, he, he seems to know absolutely everything about the UK conspiracy movement. He was there at the beginning of the anti-5G truther movement. He knows all of the, the main UK anti-vaxxers and uh, the satanic ritual abuse scandal. Don't get him started on that because he seems to know all the players in that as well. His expansive knowledge of this subject just blows my mind away, uh, which is why I would urge you all to subscribe to his channel. In fact, you can stop watching this video now, hop over to Mo's channel on the link provided below and subscribe and watch the rest of the video there. However, if you are not inclined to do so, please enjoy Mark Steele and Mental Health Part 1, a video produced by my dear friend Mohammed Shafiq and let's have another word about it after the show. Madniks super stalkers behind the Madniks expose that are in fact to his site and brigade 77 operatives, BBC operatives and Satanist cult members. Learn their signs so you can identify the Kitty Torture Killing Club and its members. Now, obviously, we've had a bit of a laugh the last few days. Uh, poor Mick is, uh, well, not poor Mick. Mick's come under quite a lot of pressure from a super stalker who's been policing the movement for quite a while with a number of other embedded actors and agents and people who follow them and uh, people who suffer serious mental health problems. Say that again. And people who follow them and uh, people who suffer serious mental health problems. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Gateshead conspiracy theorist who torched 5G mast was suffering severe mental health problems. Newcastle Crown Court heard David Patterson, who has schizophrenia, was suffering from a mental disorder at the time and had been adversely influenced by the material. He had read online, delusional online theories about the dangers posed by 5G. Technology sparked the drastic action and arson attack in Wardley Garage on Sunderland Road in the early hours of June 22nd in 2020. He set fire to one of the masts above a garage causing between £100,000 and £150,000 damage to the mast, and around £15,000 damage to the business. Patterson had stopped taking his antipsychotic medication intended to kill himself, but an officer persuaded him not to, the court heard, after reading mental health reports on him. Judge Sarah Mallet imposed a 12-month prison sentence, suspended for two years, with 200 hours of unpaid work and rehabilitation. The judge said at a previous hearing, he believed he was protecting his family and others, in reality, from the harm he thinks, in his delusional beliefs, was coming from the aerial. Judge Sarah Mallet, he believed tins and tinfoil act as a barrier from the waves. He believed he was experiencing from the 5G masts, furthered as it was, that belief, by material that is accessible on the internet that, frankly, feeds beliefs that are widely considered and accepted to be completely delusional. Prosecutor Alec Burns said he admitted he set fire to the mast, saying because it was 5G and he believed it was dangerous, where Burns said it had been difficult to repair the mast, and it will have to be replaced, which will cost between £100,000 and £150,000. Repairs to the garage would add up to almost £17,000. The court heard Patterson was admitted to a psychiatric hospital, the day after the offense Anne has started taking his medication again and is making good progress. 
David Patterson added that he is aware conspiracy theories are not good for his mind and said, I just want to spend lovely time with my lovely friends and family. David Patterson is not a lone case. There have been many others that have faced stints in mental health hospitals, section under the Mental Health Act, and a fair few that have have been given prison sentences after watching 5G fear porn nonsense on the internet pushed by Mark Steele. Another such case is that of Michael Whitty from Liverpool. Michael Whitty, aged 47, carried out extensive internet searches about the dangers of 5G before he set fire to the equipment box of the Vodafone mast in Kirkby, Merseyside, Liverpool. 5G e conspiracy theorist Michael Whitty, father of three, was jailed for three years for arson of a 5G mast in June of 2020, taking a look at the stats over on Social Blade from Mark Steele's old YouTube channel which went under the name Anthony Steele. We can see at the start of 2020 the channel Mark Steele was running to push his 5G fear porn nonsense had a dramatic rise in views and subscribers, but towards the end of May of 2020, the YouTube channel Mark Steele was running was terminated for a violation of YouTube's terms of service. But by then, the damage to many vulnerable mind had been done by the fake weapons expert Mark Steele with his killer 5G nonsense. Now let's get back to this case about Michael Whitty. Judge Thomas T. Q.C. sentenced Michael Whitty to three years imprisonment, saying there had been a high degree of planning and premeditation. There was use of firelighters and in the sense that the aim was to put the mast out of action, there was intent to cause very serious damage to property. Simon Christie, prosecuting, said three people had been seen running away from the scene of the blaze in Kirkby, Merseyside on the 4th of April 2020, but two had not been traced. The arson was one of 13 recent attacks on foam masts in Merseyside. When Whitty's home on Perimeter Road in Kirkby, was searched later in April officers discovered firelighters similar to those found at the scene. Analysis of his phone showed he had carried out searches on 5G and engaged in discussions on chat groups and had photos and videos of other phone. Mr. Christie said Witty believed he targeted a 5G mast, although it was not clear if there was any evidence to confirm that was carrying any 5G technology. Detective Inspector Steve Ball said, more than ever all members of the public are dependent on technology, including their mobile phones, to keep in touch with loved ones. People may also need their phone lines to contact the emergency services when they are in need and stupidity like this could put someone's life at risk. Ben Ryder, from Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service, said, this is a clear message to those who would put firefighters and the public at risk by setting fire to foam masks. Your actions have very real consequences for you. There is no scientific evidence of any link between 5G and coronavirus. Arson is a very serious crime and we will always work with our police colleagues to seek justice. Andrew Alty, defending, said Witty had a genuinely held view about the potential dangers linked to 5G masks, adding, the view may or may not be correct, time will tell, he acknowledges his response was wrong and disproportionate. Judge Teague said Witty had 29 previous convictions, including for assault and for possession of a firearm, but none for similar offenses. He said he believed Witty had shown genuine remorse and his charitable work showed a positive side to his character. The case came amid a rash of attacks on phone masts and telecoms engineers linked to the spread of baseless conspiracy theories linking 5G to coronavirus and other harmful health effects. Research by Ofcom has found that the claims are the most common false information reported to be seen by the British public during the lockdown. In May of 2020, Protesters gathered in London and other UK cities in violation of coronavirus laws to protest against the lockdown, with many voicing 5G conspiracy theories. And by the end of May 2020, over 90 attacks on foam masks had been reported during UK's lockdown. The incidents are believed to be motivated by conspiracy theories linking COVID-19 to the deployment of 5G masks.
There have now been around 90 similar arson and sabotage attacks since the beginning of the coronavirus lockdown, according to Mobile UK, the trade association for mobile network operators. Representatives from Mobile UK said there have also been hundreds of incidents of violent and intimidating behavior towards their staff and subcontractors. A range of conspiracy theories about mobile communications appear to be encouraging these attacks, including a scientifically impossible theory that the antennas are actually causing the symptoms of COVID. A spokesperson for MobileEek said theories being spread about 5G are baseless and are not grounded in credible scientific theory. As we have said before, Mark Steele's YouTube channel that went under the name Anthony Steele was terminated by YouTube in May of 2020. Mark Steele was losing all his social media platforms around this time because of the amount of disinformation he was putting out about 5G and the virus. But in April of 2020, Mark Steele joined Telegram, and he was soon back to his 5G fear porn, with multiple posts going out on the 9th of April. Stop 5G, it is a weapon system. 5G apocalypse. This 10-minute video can save your life. Must watch. 5G Apocalypse. The Extinction Event is a movie that was created and produced by New Age conspiracy grifter, Sacha Stone, and featured Mark Steele as its main star of the show on IMDb 5G Apocalypse. The Extinction Event is described as a full-length documentary exposing the 5G threat to humanity weapons development experts, biologists, molecular and cellular biologists, activists, as well as leaders trying to bring to light the dangers of 5G technology. But the description couldn't be further from the truth. Our very own Raynard Wilson describes it way better. 5G apocalypse, the extinction event. That was the ludicrous pseudo-documentary directed and produced by Sasha Stone and starring Mark Steele. This was the film that claimed that 5G, the, the phone system that has been active in the United Kingdom and many other countries since approximately 2018, would usher in a literal apocalypse, the end of the world. It would blight the land, kill all life, and leave our planet a smoldering husk. Well, that doesn't seem to have happened, does it? It was never about health or, or well-being, it was always about one thing. It was about selling products because the leaders of this movement knew that if you can make enough people afraid of something, you can sell them products to mitigate a thing that they weren't previously afraid of. And that's exactly what's happening Mark here. Mark Steele not Ani used the fear porn movie about 5G to scare people into burning down foam masks. It was also used to push a massive scam that used the fear of 5G technology to fleece the gullible out of $350 by offering a solution in the form of a USB stick called the 5G BioShield. Found an incredible solution. You're referring to this and that this is a microcomputer which is throwing out a shield. Um, we're told it's about 40 meters in diameter. Um, we've got independent uh, labs in Switzerland and Germany doing testing on this actually this week. Uh, but the point is that this is creating a quantum shield. And Raynard Wilson has made a brilliant video explaining the relationship between the fear porn movie 5G Apocalypse, Mark Steele, a new age conspiracy grifter Sacha Stone and the USB BioShield scam, which will be linked in the description and well worth watching. The USB BioShield was picked up on by the BBC's news technology correspondent Rory Sellen Jones. Really torn. This 5 BioShield USB key comes recommended by a member of the Glastonbury 5G committee. But should I get one for £283 or three for £799? Rory Sellen Jones, the BBC's news technology correspondent, soon got his hand on the USB device that was being sold at an extortionate price. Rory was soon testing the device that claimed to protect from 5G and claimed to contain quantum technology. Pulling apart a 339-pound anti-5G USB stick to find the quantum tech inside. Spoiler, 
I can get you a five pounds device which will do as good a job. As we all thought, the USB device that was being sold at £239 as a cure-all protection device for all the 5G fear porn pushed in the movie 5G Apocalypse was just a 128 megabyte USB drive with a sticker on it. There were many people involved with the 5G BioShield scam. There was Jock Bauer and Lija Lakisevic, the inventors of the 5G BioShield, Sacha Stone who marketed it, using the movie 5G Apocalypse, the extinction event as a backbone to drum fear into people of a new technology. And there was the former doorman and fake weapons expert Mark Steele who was the main star of the movie 5G Apocalypse who was portrayed as some sort of technology expert with his breakdown of a street lighting node that wasn't even 5G. All of these people work together to play on the mental health of vulnerable people to push a scam product that was the cure-all for all the fear porn about 5G and radio waves in the movie 5G Apocalypse. If it wasn't for the BBC News technology correspondent, Rory Sellen Jones getting his hands on one of the devices and having it tested, the scam product would have never hit mainstream media. But as soon as it did hit mainstream media, Trading Standards launched an investigation and deemed the 5G BioShield a scam. Now that concludes part 1 of looking into how Mark Steele the fake weapons expert infects the minds of vulnerable people and affects their mental health with his 5G fear porn. Be sure to look out for part 2 where we will look some more into how Mark Steele affects people's mental health. Thank you very much to Mohammed Shafiq for another excellent video and once again you can subscribe and like all of his videos, hop over to his channel using the link provided below. I strongly recommend that you do that. All of Mo's work is well worth your attention because of all the people I know who research and make videos about UK conspiracy stuff, he's probably got the most expansive knowledge. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you all again in one week's time for uh, an original Reynard Wilson episode of Mind of Steel. And until then, I shall be busy sunning myself somewhere profoundly pleasant and far, far away from the town of Gateshead in the northeast of England, where the demons dwell and the banshees howl and Mark Steele points at another lamppost.